Sure, we all love the main characters of anime, whether they be powerful, humorous, inspiring, etc. But what about, what about the side characters? What about the characters who aren't necessarily on the cover of the DVDs or anything along those lines? Well, every now and then I like to think about side characters. Side characters who, in my opinion, are sometimes more interesting than the protagonist. Well, maybe they're not always more interesting, but sometimes I feel bad for the side characters who are left out and not given a whole lot to do. And in that case, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is kind of a prime example. Don't get me wrong, I like Jay and Yuki. I think he's a very compelling character. Hmm. Get your game on! What game are we talking about? Odd catchphrases aside, he can be very compelling. But I'm talking about one of the side characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX who didn't get the love they deserved. No. No. No, really, not them. But no, I'm talking about the character known as Bastion Misawa. Unlike the Chaz, Princeton, Jaden's Kaiba-like rival, and Cyrus, Jaden's friend, kind of a Joey-type character, Bastion's a little different. He's a friendly rival, which I know a lot of people don't like, but hear me out. He's a lot different from Jaden. While Jaden likes to focus more on luck and believing in his cards, Bastion does things a little differently. He relies on hard work and perseverance for his success. Not only that, but he feels as though everything can be solved through science. He has dozens of formulas written on his baseball bat, on his cards, and even in his room. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bastion's a little bit of an oddball. But it kind of makes sense, because everybody in this show is a little bit of an oddball. I mean, come on. It's a card game school. How many of you actually want to go there? Okay, one, two, oh, all of you. My bad. Yeah, me too. When we first meet Bastion, we learn that he's the top new student in the freshman class. He's placed in the Raw Yellow dorm, which actually works kind of perfectly for him, considering Raw Yellow students are basically a little more crafty, intelligent, but not too in your face about it. In fact, whenever he talks to the other Cypher students, he never looks down on them. He actually treats them like they're equals. At first, I really wasn't sure if Bastion would have that much of a bearing for Jaden, until episode 12, A Formula for Success, when the class is playing a game of baseball, because, you know, that's what you do at card game schools, Bastion shows up late, and in the Japanese version, he runs late because he was working on his deck, while in the English version, he says it's because he was deep into some attack point quantum mechanics. I was deep into some attack point quantum mechanics. They're a thing, I guess. He shows up and strikes out Jaden, and then Crowler takes an interest in him and wants him to become his protege. Beforehand, we learn a little bit more about Bastion, though. He's obsessed with formulas, and while he lives in the raw dorm, he gets lobster, because, yeah, didn't you go to a bunch of schools that could afford food like that? Yeah, definitely. Right next to the caviar and the foie gras. Then, later on in the night, as he's staying over at the Cypher Red dorm, we learn that the Chaz threw out Bastion's card so he wouldn't be able to duel against him in the upcoming exam. Of course, this could lead to some problems, but not for Bastion, who takes off his jacket and reveals he has six different dueling decks. You know, outsiders would laugh at this, but overall, this is actually a pretty smart strategy. This represents just how well-rounded Bastion is and how he kind of represents actual Yu-Gi-Oh players. He has a bunch of different decks to counter a bunch of different scenarios, and it's not just a bunch of normal monsters like the rest of the GX cast, but we can talk about that in a bit. Each of his decks represent the different elements, light, dark, wind, earth, water, fire, you get it, basically. And he defeats the Chaz with his water deck. 
with water. Sadly, we never get to see his fire deck in action, which especially pissed me off, because if you look in the opening theme song, you can see a fire dragon standing right next to him, which we never learned anything about, but I'm not bitter. You're bitter. Shut up. He's granted admission into Obelisk Blue, but he declines it because he wants to beat the number one duelist in the freshman class, and he believes that to be Jaden. Heck, in their duel, he actually finds a way to neutralize Jaden's biggest strategy, fusion monsters. He plays a card that stops Jaden from fusing monsters. He still ends up losing, but it was still a cool way of showing not only is Bastion pretty intelligent, but Jaden can find a way to think even with his best cards in the shop. Afterwards, Bastion is chosen to be one of the key guardians against the Shadow Riders. He loses to Tanya with his Earth deck filled with magnet cards, which were actually pretty... They were actually pretty decent cards. They actually worked like magnets, repelling other cards and attracting other cards, and sadly they haven't been released yet, but you kind of grow used to that as a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. It's basically par for the course. Sadly, this is also when Bastion's character took a nosedive. On the one hand, he was pretty prominent in the beginning of Season 1, pretty much a rival for Chaz and Jade and all those other characters, but now he was slowly starting to become less and less important. He would get interrupted, he would get forgotten about, and there were times when he was the butt of the joke, and that's just a trope I've never really appreciated in anime. The character who basically gets ignored, whether it's Shino from Naruto or Gordon from Black Clover, I'm just not a fan of it. it. Maybe it's due to the fact that I suffer from a lot of anxiety and I want to make a lot of friends. It, it's, not an, it's not a good way of writing a character, unless of course you want them to overcome it, which he was never really able to do in the course of the series. Heck, Season 2 would have been an excellent time to do this thanks to the Society of Light arc, with everybody else getting brainwashed by the Light and Sartorius. He's one of the people who wonders, why haven't I been brainwashed? Why aren't they coming after me? And he basically gets in his own head thinking that he's not good enough, so when he duels a brainwashed Chaz to release his friends from the Society of Light, he's about to win, but he ends up losing on purpose just to learn and be a part of the group because the deal was if he lost he would become a part of the society like everybody else the really weird thing about this arc too is that he's not brainwashed he's pretty much doing it of his own accord he acts basically the same as he always does and while the chaz and alexis both have two-parter episodes where they're freed from sartorius's control thanks to Jaden. One of those duels I feel like shouldn't have happened, though, if anything, since Chaz brainwashed Alexis and promised that he would save her, I kind of feel like Chaz the one to save Alexis, not Jaden, but whatever. Bastion doesn't even duel his way out of the society. Professor Eisenstein loses to Jaden, and then Bastion strips naked in the Japanese version, or just down to his underwear in the English version. Although, to be fair, if I looked like that and card games did that to my body, I'd be I'd be doing the same thing more often. <laughs> Please don't report me. Honestly, this is where the joke should have ended. Bastion should have realized his worth and all of a sudden became more of a driving force in Season 2. The beginning of Season 2 could have been his Crisis of Confidence story, and the ending of Season 2 could have wrapped it all up. He didn't necessarily have to be the one to save the world, even though I definitely think he could have but I still think it would have been pretty interesting if they had wrapped up his character and found a way to make him a hero in the story of some sorts. Heck, if you beat Sartorius as Bastion in Duel Links, Sartorius will say that Bastion's intellect is his greatest enemy. Why not play that up? Because it certainly didn't seem like he was that much of a threat during the arc. The only other real contribution Bastion has throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is in Season 3 when he and Tanya actually end up teaming up to help save the world with Jaden when they're in the other dimension. In fact, out of all of Jaden's friends, Bastion is one of the ones who's left standing, who hasn't been quote-unquote sent to the shadows. It's basically the Shadow Realm, but not nearly as fun to say. Basically, Bastion is the one who kind of snaps Jaden out of his funk, has to tell him, all of our friends are gone, you have to be the one to save the world, because if you don't save the world, we're gone. You can do this. You can use the power that was evil within you. You can make it a force for good. And then he apologizes for getting all in his face and everything, because, you know, 
Bastion. Uh, sorry for grabbing your arm like that. And all the big yelling. Just trying to pep talk you. I wasn't going to talk about this too long, but in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 3, yeah, the third one actually did have a European version, it's just really hard to come by, there was a story with Bastion being your tag partner. He was sick of being overlooked and he wanted to help people. He wanted to help save the day. And he actually did help with that. And later in the story, he actually learns that he doesn't have to be noticed. He doesn't have to be the number one person. He just has to keep fighting for what's right, whether people notice or not. And it's a really good story, especially with you by his side. Not sure why they couldn't have done more with that or have given him a little more that you want in the actual show, but I guess I ha just have to take what I can get at this point. So, as much as I would like to think of what happened with Bastion, why he wasn't more utilized, I want to take this time to talk about why he's so important to me. Bastion is a bit of an absurd character, to say the least. As much as he wants to act normal around everybody around him, he's actually kind of a goofball. As smart as he is, he doesn't always think about what he's going to say, and that can result in some dirty looks or people beating him up for no good apparent reason. I'm still upset about Alexis hitting him. All he did was say, she can't carry a tune, nothing more. He was trying to help. But regardless, Bastion is a genius, and I think that's kind of the problem. Geniuses are not always given the respect they deserve. Not that I would know anything about that, but geniuses just aren't looked on as well as people who are lucky. And Jaden's good, but he's also very lucky. So in my mind, it almost kind of makes sense how his character got thrown to the wayside. Like I said, lucky people are given far more to do than smart people, and as sad as it is, it does kind of reflect some stuff in today's world. Or they just completely screwed up and they just didn't know what they were doing with Bastion the whole time. Yeah, that, that actually makes a little more sense. Besides his little crisis of confidence, if I had to give his character something, honestly, I would have had him beat Dr. Crowler at some point. Maybe at some point after he's done with traveling and being done with the Academy, maybe they would have let him be a teacher. He would have been a great teacher. You can't tell me that you're not a tad bit interested in the land that is attack point quantum mechanics. There has to be some form of curiosity there. Just l l let me know what you guys think that is in the comments. Overall though, despite being underappreciated by both the writers, creators, and his own classmates, I think Bastion Misawa is a very interesting, underappreciated character who, in my opinion, could have done a lot more. He's one of my favorites just because of how ludicrous he can be sometimes, but at the same time, there is something kind of cool about him in a sense. I don't know. That's just my two cents about it. But overall, what did you guys think of Bastion? What ways would you have developed this character a tad more? Or just what other Yu-Gi-Oh! GX characters you think were underdeveloped? Maybe we'll do a video about them. Or just, are there any other characters in anime you would like us to talk about that are underutilized? Maybe we can do a series about it. Just let us know. And stop these vile rumors of Bastion Masawa being posh. They are horrible, disgusting rumors. Stop them right now. Also, the trio of him, Blair, and the Vagabond. I think it'd be a pretty cool trio. They'd have some pretty interesting moments, but just let us know. This has been Alex saying good night and peace easy.